Hello everyone, and welcome back to Tutoru's channel. Today we're diving into a topic that plagues even the most seasoned writers and speakers. Common grammar mistakes. Whether you're crafting an email, writing a report, or just having a conversation, avoiding these errors can make all the difference in how you're perceived. But before we share the most common English grammar mistakes, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Subscribing ensures you stay updated on our English learning content and supports us in continuing to provide valuable tips and tricks for free. Your subscription helps us keep up the good work so you can benefit from our ongoing free English resources. Ready, let's jump right in. First up, let's tackle subject verb agreement. This mistake occurs when the subject and verb in a sentence don't match in number. For example, the team are winning should be the team is winning because team is singular. Tip. To avoid this, always double check that your subject and verb agree in number. Next, we have the misuse of apostrophes. One common error is using apostrophes for plural nouns, like apples instead of apples. Apostrophes should only be used for contractions, such as, it's raining outside, or to show possession, such as, the girl's doll. Tip, please remember if you're talking about more than one of something, you don't need an apostrophe. The S only shows a plural noun. Moving on, let's talk about the difference between its and its. Its is a possessive pronoun, such as, that car is red, its color is red, while its is a contraction for it is or it has. Example, that dog is fast, it's running as fast as a car's. Mixing these up is a common mistake that can easily be avoided by remembering their distinct uses. Tip, always ask yourself, am I trying to say it is or it has? If not, use it. Now, let's discuss the misuse of there, there, and there. There refers to a place, such as look over there. There shows possession, such as their son is in Bahamas, while there is a contraction for they are. Example, they're with me now. Mixing these up can lead to confusion, so be sure to use the correct one depending on the context. Tip, take a moment to double check which one fits best in your sentence. Fifth on our list is the misuse of your and your. Your indicates possession, such as your daughter is rich, while your is a contraction for you are. Example, you're famous. This mistake is especially common in informal writing, but it's important to get it right to maintain clarity. Always remember, your means you are. Next, we have the misuse of than and then. Than is used for making comparisons, such as, she's more intelligent than her, while then indicates time or sequence. Example, today I went to the grocery store, then I bought two kilograms of flour. Confusing these two can change the meaning of your sentence entirely. Tip, if you're talking about a comparison, use then. If you're referring to time or sequence, use then. Seventh on our list is the incorrect use of effect and effect. Affect is typically used as a verb, meaning to influence, such as, your behavior really affected me, while effect is usually a noun indicating the result of an action. Example, what is the effect of mixing these two liquids? Mixing these up is a common mistake, but remembering their distinct roles can help you use them correctly. Tip, if you're talking about causing something, use affect. If you're referring to the result, use effect. Now let's talk about the misuse of fewer and less. Fewer is used for countable items, such as, I've got fewer pens than you, while less is used for uncountable items, such as, can you please give me less tea? It's fewer cars but less water. Mixing these up is a common mistake, but paying attention to whether you're dealing with countable or uncountable nouns can help you get it right. Tip, if you can count it, use fewer. If not, use less. Second to last, we have the misuse of who and whom. Who is used as the subject of a sentence, such as who is that, while whom is used as the object to whom it may concern. It's a subtle distinction, but using the correct one can elevate your writing and speech. Tip remember, who does something, whom has something done to them. Lastly, let's address the misuse of good and well. Good is an adjective describing nouns, such as a good person, while well is an adverb describing verbs, such as, you know her so well. Saying I'm doing good is incorrect. It should be, I'm doing well. 
Paying attention to this distinction can help you sound more polished in your communication. Tip. Always remember, good describes what something is. Well describes how something is done. And there you have it, folks. 10 common grammar mistakes and how to avoid them. Remember, grammar may seem tedious, but mastering these basics can significantly improve your writing and communication skills. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tips and tricks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.